petrol engine versus diesel engine. What differs gasoline engines from diesel engines in terms of fuel, horsepower, and torque? To understand the difference between both diesel and petrol fuel first we will discuss about fossil fuels and how they are extracted. For more than a century, burning fossil fuels has generated most of the energy required to propel our cars, power our businesses, and keep the lights on in our homes. Even today, oil, coal, and gas serve about 80% of our energy needs. About millions of years ago, marine organisms like algae and microscopic animals and plants died and settled on the ocean floor beneath other sediments in the ocean. And in the absence of oxygen, these fossils changed into a substance called kerogen. Under heat and pressure, kerogen gradually changes into oil or gas. These fuels are found in the Earth's crust and contain carbon and hydrogen, which can be burned for energy. Coal, oil, and natural gas are examples of fossil fuels. An oil refinery is an industrial plant that transforms or refines crude oil into various usable petroleum products such as diesel, gasoline, and heating oils like kerosene. A typical oil refining process consists of several processing units such as distillation, cracking, coking, reforming, and post-treatment and refining of the products. Refining breaks crude oil down into its various components, which are then selectively reconfigured into new products. Petroleum refineries are complex and expensive industrial facilities. All refineries have three basic steps, separation, conversion, and treatment. Furthermore in details will be discussed in another video let's come to the topic why petrol engine differs from diesel engine. Petrol engine. A petrol engine is a type of internal combustion IC engine in which the air fuel mixture ignites due to the spark provided by a spark plug. Therefore, it is also known as SI engine. In 1876, Nikolaus August Otto designed the first petrol engine. A petrol engine works on the basic principle of the auto cycle. A petrol engine works in the following way. First, suction stage. Second, compression stage. Third, power stage. And fourth is exhaust stage. Petrol engines run on volatile fuels such as gasoline. In these engines, air and fuel are generally mixed post-compression. Petrol engines works on the auto cycle which consists of four processes. Two isentropic reversible adiabatic processes and two isochoric constant volume processes. Air and petrol are usually mixed in a carburetor before being introduced to the cylinder. Once the air and petrol are compressed, the fuel is ignited via an electric spark known as spark plug. Diesel engine Rudolf Diesel, in full. Rudolf Christian Karl Diesel was a German inventor and mechanical engineer. In the 1890s, Rudolf Diesel invented an efficient compression ignition internal combustion engine called as diesel engine which burns diesel fuel that bears his name. Both are named after him. His invention came while the steam engine was the predominant power source for large industries. The diesel cycle is very similar to the auto cycle. Both cycles are commonly used to model internal combustion engines. The difference between them is that the diesel cycle is a compression ignition cycle instead of a spark ignition cycle like the auto cycle. In diesel engine ignition of fuel is caused by the rising temperature of the air in the cylinder due to the mechanical compression called adiabatic compression, therefore, do not require a separate energy source to burn. Unlike the spark ignition engines such as gasoline engines that uses a spark plug to ignite the air fuel mixture, we might note that most fuels will start combustion on their own at some temperature and pressure. For instance, when a gasoline engine, ordinarily an auto cycle device, run at overly high compression ratios, it can start dieseling where the fuel ignites before the spark is generated. Diesel engine have same stages like petrol engine. The stages include is the intake stroke, 
the compression stroke, the power stroke, and the exhaust stroke. The ideal diesel cycle consists of four processes, two isentropic processes, one constant pressure, and one constant volume process. Let's discuss all the process in detail. Process 0 to 1, suction process. In this process, the inlet valve opens and suction of air takes place. Process 1 to 2, isentropic compression. The air sucked is now compressed isentropically. Due to the compression, the temperature of the air increases to such level at which the diesel gets ignites. It is called as compression stroke. Process 2 to 3, constant pressure heat addition. The piston is at TDC and at this time, the diesel fuel is injected into the cylinder through fuel injector in atomized form. As this atomized diesel fuel comes in contact with the hot compressed air, it gets ignited and combustion process starts. The combustion of fuel adds heats to the engine. Process 3 to 4, isentropic expansion. The combustion process adds a large amount of heat and this creates a large force on the piston head and it moves downward from TDC to BDC. It is the power stroke. Process 4 to 1, constant volume heat rejection. The piston is at BDC and the coolant comes in contact with the cylinder walls and takes away heat from the engine and makes it cool. After that piston moves upward. Process 1 to 0, exhaust process. In this process, the piston moves from BDC to TDC and exhaust valve opens. All the burnt gases left in the cylinder escapes out through exhaust valve. It is the exhaust stroke. This is how a four-stroke compression engine works. Now let's understand the relationship between horsepower and torque and how to mathematically calculate it. Understanding basics of power. Since any of us became interested in engines, we have been interested in power. Power is defined as the amount of work we do in a given time. By equation, power is equal to work divide by time. So really when we describe something as having a lot of power, we are really saying that it can do a lot of work in a small amount of time. This helps us put perspective on what we are really talking about when we are looking at engine power. In the automotive world we look at two American standard units we call torque and horsepower. What most don't know is that these two units are intertwined and inseparable. Because of this, the goal of a well-powered engine is going to be one with both horsepower and torque being very similar to each other. What is torque? Torque is a measure of the force that can cause an object to rotate about an axis. The amount of force applied over the length of the lever arm measured from the fulcrum to where you applied the force. In the case of an engine, this would be the force the piston and rod applied on the crank multiplied by the length of the crank arm. One can then understand why when an engine builder strokes a motor by putting in a longer crank, the motor gains a healthy amount of torque. What is horsepower? Horsepower is a unit of measurement of power, or the rate at which work is done. The amount of work the engine does over a given time. Work is equal to force into distance. Therefore, horsepower is equal to force into distance, divide by time, but what we are talking about the relationship between horsepower and torque. Torque is basically the force that we are talking about in the above equation. So if we substitute that and clean things up a bit, what we are left with is the following equation. Horsepower is equal to torque multiply by RPM divide by 5,252. Now you might be asking that what is that number comes from? So basically, one horsepower is equal to 33,000 foot-pounds of work per minute. Adding in the equation for torque and velocity, you'll start to see that horsepower will always equal torque multiple by RPM and divided by 5,252. If you can sell out the equal variables, you'll have horsepower and torque equaling out at 5,000 252 RPM. The question is which engine is best, petrol or diesel engine in terms of fuel, horsepower, and torque.
We apply force while opening a nut with a wrench. This force creates a rotational motion in the nut. This rotating force is called as torque. If the force we apply is not enough to open the nut, we can extend the wrench. Although the force we apply is the same but the torque applied to the nut increases. In this way we can create a greater rotational force by applying the same force. So simply the magnitude of the rotational effect is called torque. The untightening of the nut is work. If I am doing it very slowly we are not using a lot of power. And if we are doing it very quickly we are using a lot of power. And that power is usually measured in terms of horsepower. Car also move according to the same principle. The motion generated in the engine is transmitted to the wheels by gears and turns the wheels. Although the power produced by the engine is the same, by adjusting of the piston rods, the torque transmitted to the wheels can be increased or decreased. Now imagine a sports car and a truck, the engines of both produce is approximately the same power. However, the sports car comfortably leaves the truck behind in the race. A truck can easily loads that a sports car can never pull. So torque is simply the rotational force transmitted to the wheels. The number of times this rotational force torque is transmitted per second is called as horsepower. That's why horsepower and torque are much closed concepts. Understanding diesel and petrol engine according to compression ratio. The compression ratio is the ratio of the maximum to minimum volume in the cylinder of an internal combustion engine. It is the ratio of the volume above the piston when it is at the bottommost position BDC to the volume above the piston when it is at the topmost position TDC. It indicates the extent to which you compress the air-fuel mixture in the engine. Understanding diesel and petrol engine according to compression ratio. The compression ratio is the ratio of the maximum to minimum volume in the cylinder of an internal combustion engine. It is the ratio of the volume above the piston when it is at the bottommost position BDC to the volume above the piston when it is at the topmost position TDC. It indicates the extent to which you compress the air-fuel mixture in the engine. Let me explain with an example. Imagine an engine with a total volume of 2000 cc in this 2000 cc. The 1900 cc is the swept volume the distance covered by the piston when it travels from BDC to TDC. And the clearance volume is 100 cc the remaining volume in the cylinder when the piston reaches TDC. Therefore, the CR of this engine is 2021. The engine performance increases by increasing the compression ratio. As you know, the diesel engine doesn't contain a spark plug, and the ignition process occurs due to the high compression of the air-fuel mixture. Therefore, the diesel engine compression ratio 12 ratio 1 to 23 ratio 1 is higher than the petrol engine compression ratio 8 ratio 1 to 12 ratio 1. In terms of fuel, which engine is best? The calorific value of diesel fuel is roughly 45.5 megajoules per kilogram, slightly lower than petrol which is 45.8 megajoules per kilogram. However, diesel fuel is denser than petrol and contains about 15% more energy by volume roughly 36.9 megajoules per liter, compared to 33.7 megajoules per liter. Petrol releases energy more quickly, whilst diesel produces more power per liter, giving a petrol-powered vehicle the advantage when it comes to acceleration yet a disadvantage when it comes to MPG. In terms of torque and horsepower, which engine is best petrol or diesel? In very simple terms, higher horsepower translates to a higher top speed and a faster car. Conversely, a higher torque figure translates to more power. When this is taken into consideration, diesel engines are the more powerful of the two. If you are looking to go off-roading or will be carrying heavy loads, a powerful diesel engine would provide the power you need. Petrol engines are not far behind, but when it comes to power as a metric, they lose out to diesel engines.
Also, diesel engines never rev as high as petrol engines due to the fact that the piston has to travel further for its full rotation, while a petrol engine uses its shorter stroke to move the piston in quicker bursts, meaning the engine speed can be faster. Why are diesel engines are often designed with a long stroke as compared to gasoline engines? What is it about diesel fuel itself that leads designers generally to use a longer stroke for diesel and a shorter stroke for gasoline? Diesel engines need a higher compression ratio, as it is the temperature of the compressed air that is responsible for igniting the fuel. The compression ratio is approximately the ratio of the volume of the cylinder at the bottom of the stroke to the volume of the cylinder at the top of the stroke. All things being equal, the longer the stroke, the higher the compression ratio. Hence, diesel engines have a longer stroke. Thanks for watching the video. For more subscribe to my channel.